go. So this is an old F-350 single axle dump that I actually got for free from a subscriber up in Gary, Indiana. Made the round trip, made a video on the whole adventure and everything. I'll put a link in the description if you want to check it out. It's got a 460 in it. It does run. Transmission's good and the hydraulic pump. And by good, I mean it lasted us a couple laps around the barn for a little bit of a test thing. I've got this rig here, then I've got something else out in the woods. And we've got this truck that actually came out of Alabama. It's a Super Duty frame. Let me show you. And the nice thing about the Super Duty frame is it's a heavier frame. And by the way, at any point you think this fella knows what he's talking about, you're mistaken. You know those channels you watch and they have all the answers, but you can tell they only know it because they Googled it five minutes before they did the video? I have no idea what I'm doing, and I'm going to be straight up honest with you on that. This is the type of channel where we just pick up tools so we can learn how to use them. This is a project for me to learn something on and come out with a decent truck. It's going to be a good time. But the cab itself is pretty clean, too. A little surface rust on top, but as far as down here, look at this. Look how good all that looks. Not too shabby. It's got the 10 lug front end, and it would have had the 10 lug dual as well and i'm hoping between the two of them a little bit of welding some steel and some parts we can come up with a pretty budget friendly good single axle dump truck to run around the homestead let's get started on this before we get too invested let me give you the up close tour of everything we got going on that way we're all on the same page the outside of the bed as far as that goes and the skin Really not too in bad shape. Tailgate's in pretty decent shape itself. Once you hop underneath and you look at the cross members, we got a little bit of weight reduction going on. The first thing I'd like to do is get this bed off here and get her flipped upside down so we can get a little bit better look at it. As far as the frame itself, it's not terrible on the back end of things. I'll crawl underneath here and we'll show you the main reason I want to switch frames. The weight reduction on the front is a little bit heavier, especially when we get into this section. Isn't that neat? Rusted straight through right here, that crack. And here's the passenger side for you. Got some pretty heavy rust issues going on there. The other major rust thing here on the cab, I've noticed the seat belt mount. See this should be like that. It should be together. Like that. Yeah, it's not. So the cab's starting to fall apart from the bottom side. So I'm hoping between that other frame, which is in really nice shape, and the other cab, which is in pretty decent shape as well, we could piece us something nice together. I think we can. There's still a ton of good parts on that cab though, so we're gonna try to save it and store it in our new world headquarters. Yep, we bought something. I don't know. Uh, you'll see it in some upcoming videos. It's gonna be exciting. Now I gotta figure out how to get this bed off. That's gonna be step one. We should have a couple pins back here that hold it on, which we do. And however it attaches to the hoist. I say let's see if we can get her running. And, uh, well, we'll run the hoist up a little bit and see what we got to work with under there. I can't hear the fuel pump kicking on, so I think that's my issue. I don't feel like fighting it this morning. We're just gonna take the backhoe, which we're gonna use to lift the bed off anyway. We'll chain up here to the front somewhere and just uh, slowly lift the bed up that way. I'm gonna let that run off the truck just a little bit get some juice in the battery, get her stirred up while we're waiting. Let's go ahead and get that chain on there. We'll let that battery charge a little bit longer. We might as well go ahead and take some of this stuff off. That's gonna help us when we wanna raise this up anyway. Go ahead and take this valve off, disconnect some of these hoses, drain this little reservoir.
got the old kickstand here. Should keep us safe for the time being. I was hoping there's just a pin I could punch up. Doesn't look like it. Unless I can torch that off. Well, after looking at this thing for a little bit, we got quite a bit of rust jacking going on here. I think we're going to end up just making a whole new... We're going to have a lot of new, which is fine. I'm okay with that. New is good. That's what we're going for. I think I'm just going to take the old plasma cutter, nip this here as much as I can, and then when we set it down, take those pins out, hopefully we can just pick it up off there. Yeah, I said plasma cutter. Everybody keeps suggesting it. Saying I need to get one, so never hooked us up with one. So not only do we get to fumble around with this truck bed today, we get to try to learn a new tool in the process. Ground clamp, tubing, and the business end of this operation. Better take a gander at the old instructions just right quick. It comes with an air pressure reduction valve. Now that's handy. And it comes with a roll of Teflon tape for the hookup. Now that on it. Okay, all right. So they send a ton of tubing, I guess, so you can plan to run it how you want. That could probably be a little neater, but you know, welcome to the channel. And then a little cable holder up top. Now, isn't that fancy? The only thing that they didn't send, unless I'm not seeing it, which is fine because I keep plenty around here anyway, is the air inlet from the compressor. Well, that's a handy little unit. I guess you could just tuck it like so. This is the magic page I was looking for. It's got types of steels, thicknesses, the amperage to be running. It also has a different chart of amperage if you're plugged into 230, 240 versus 120. Okay, handy dandy. And it did come with different size tips as well. Now I know most people would fire this up and run it on some steel laying around just to practice with it, but oh, you guys know that's not my style. We're just gonna jump right into this thing and see what happens. I did say the air pressure is preset here on four and a half pounds. So we should be good in there and shouldn't have to mess with anything on that one. So we've got a heck of a setup here and I know it doesn't seem like this would be quicker. If I had oxy, it'd be quicker just to run the hoses out and cut it. But I think once the fella gets the setup, it's uh, gonna be a lot faster. The John Deere doesn't really play any integral part in this operation. She's just here for the party. Vever air compressor over there as well, running off that champion generator. We got a lot of cool things coming up on the channel, like some big changes, some changes we've been planning for for over a year. And a lot of things are really getting ready to come into fruition for us. And I'm excited and I hope you guys are excited. This mess is all gonna make sense here in the next couple months, I promise you. So the plan is finally working. right now. Oh, I'm on fire. Shoot. Power is going to be a problem. Well, you guys died at some point, but I didn't, so that's good. We're just going to pull this down a little bit. Oh, I did get my tarp, didn't I? Deck on it. That'll be alright. Oh, easy. See if we can get these back pins out. Took a wrench up on that. There we 
go. Let me just try a piece of steel and a hammerhead. Well, imagine if we had the whole hammer, huh? That'd be pretty productive. the often imitated but never duplicated adjustable lifting strap. Remember, don't do any of this at home. It's not advisable. four-wheeler out of the way the plan is to go right in there flip it upside down somehow Now we can really get up close and see the whole story. Definitely quite a bit of weight reduction of those cross members. It's kind of a silly design if you think about it. When they built it, it's just a stitch and a stitch, probably a stitch there, which means that whole thing's open and that whole thing's open. So it's just, just catches water and dirt and material. I mean, it had some weak holes here, but fairly not enough. Oh yeah something going on there this side is the worst out of all of it for sure and it's the same for these runners they had that same design so look what you end up with on the inside of this thing just years of dirt and rust just sits in there and rusts those things out here's what I'm thinking my plan is I think I'm going to cut all these cross members out, replace that with either tubing or seat channel. Either completely closed or completely open so we can keep them cleaned so they don't rust out and become dirt traps like that. These are actually in good shape. Um, it's just where they were kind of attached to the bed. That part. Obviously not in great shape. So we're going to save these, take all the tubing out, run new cross members, and we'll just go ahead. I would like to. I need to price it. But I'd like to go ahead and cut that skin out because with cross members out, it's just a really good opportunity to replace that whole skin on the bottom. The sides aren't bad as far as the skin goes. I mean, we've got some surface rust, but it's just surface rust. There's nothing rusting all the way through. The outside's really not too terrible. Well, let's take a look at this frame real quick and see if I feel like I want to save this or rebuild it. Actually, I mean, it's got, well, oh, yeah, no. Oh. I was really optimistic up to about here. Then we went downhill. I think we might just go ahead and replace that as well. I think the next thing I want to do is go ahead and get this hoist out though. I do want to save that. Looks like we got some remnants of some bolts. No point of trying to save those. Okay. Look at that bolt. This is crazy. So in theory it should be loose, just need to route these hoses through and we'll try to get her picked up and out of there. That was pretty smooth, huh? Oh yeah. Nice. Very nice. 
So I'm just gonna keep dropping stuff out here that I think I might either use on the piece together rebuild or use for something else in the future. So this back fuel tank's gonna be my next thing. Nice. That's looking, that's nice. I opted for out the top because there's one, two, three, the same on the other side bolts with a nut on the back side. I put a half inch impact on it and just tried to break them off. Had to drive a 12 on there because there's no rest of the half inch wouldn't fit. That's okay. Fought that for a couple minutes and thought, you know what, well, let's just go out the top. I think that's gonna be faster. Not too bad. I do believe this one is just ratchet strapped up, so. Zip tied though, that's fancy. So I'm kind of at the crossroads here. See that axle on the back, it's in good shape. And that axle has a decent reputation based on everything I've read from the forums and talking to Clint a little bit. It's, it's a good axle, it does what it's supposed to do. There's never been any major complaints about it, but this is a super duty frame and a super duty axle should have more capacity so I don't know if I want to pull that axle and then try to sell it and use that money to subsidize the purchase of a super duty rear end where we can put some disc brakes on it and a little bit heavier axle or if I just want to roll that axle out and throw some super duty, super duty suspension on it I'm not 100% sure I'm going back and forth with Clint from CNC equipment literally as we speak on what the best option to do is but one thing is for sure I know I want that axle out from underneath the truck let's do that I'm out of O2 on oh, my oxy setup. I'll get some picked up next week. It just kind of got away from me, which means we're going to have to grind or everything. I'm not super excited about it. So I want to try something real quick because I really want to use this plasma cutter. I've got her hooked up to the 240 on the welder. Plugged in there. She's on. We're going to see if we can cut something thicker here because I want to cut the back end of that frame off once we get that out of there. Power was definitely the issue with it the first round. I think it was pretty obvious that little generator not putting out enough. Running off the 240 of the Miller, no problem at all. I'm just gonna have to get a longer 240 cord. Probably ought to watch some tutorials as well because it looks like there's some user error there. I don't know if you could tell. I mean, I'm sure it looks smooth as butter, but behind the scenes, it was a struggle. I think this back hole is starting. We get the dang thing out of here. I didn't always have a backhoe. Sometimes the fella's gotta go back to his roots. The old 755 coming in for the wind. I'm gonna hook a chain to the front, see if I can't pull her over there in front of the shop to where I can cut the back end of that off and then we'll get the cab all situated how I want it for the next step.
You guys have been suggesting forever that I need a plasma cutter, and I disagree. I don't need one. I've gotten by without it, but I'll say this. If a fella has a few extra dollars for some luxuries in life and you do metal work every now and then, yeah, that's going to be nice. I'll still have to use the oxy every now and then for thicker metal or heating and bending things or the rosebud tip or that kind of thing, but I won't have to use it as much for cutting, which means I don't have to take my tanks to town to get them refilled as much. That thing's going to be slick. If I get myself a longer cord from the welder generator, I can run out here to actually work on the bed with it. We're going to be looking good. This is where I'm leaving you on this one. Next video, though, we're right back on it. We're getting ready to play do -si do with that truck and the truck out in the woods. We're going to get them up to here nose to nose so we can start swapping cab components, do a little bit more work on this, do some figuring on the axle things. I'll have a lot of answers for your questions on the next ones for sure. We'll be on this project through most of December. The only exception being we will be getting distracted by a third function hydraulic kit from Summit Hydraulics for the old 555. So that'll be somewhere in the middle, but the rest of it's going to be all truck. Try to get this thing up and together, a rolly chassis and running. Some work done on the bed. I'm excited. I hope you guys are excited. I can't thank you enough for all your support and watching the channel and hitting the likes and hitting the shares and being subscribed and having the notifications turned on and all the other things that the responsibilities you got as a viewer, it's a lot. I know it is, and I appreciate it. Um, 